what a perfect time to be alive if you're looking for a budget mechanical keyboard. Unlike a couple of years ago, finding a good budget mechanical keyboard that doesn't require much modification to sound and feel good is pretty much non-existent. Before, most budget mechanical keyboards around the $50 range sounds really bad with rattly stabilizers, annoying ping sound, and cheap ABS keycaps. That changes today. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen a pre-built keyboard that already has lube stabilizers, has stabilizer dampeners, and silicone and foam dampeners all at the same time out of the box for just around 2,895 pesos or around 56 US dollars. I'm talking about the new Rack Pira mechanical keyboard. Now, add a hot swappable board and wireless connectivity with everything I already mentioned, and we now have one of the best pre built mechanical keyboards at this price range. With that being said, let's get into it. So, right here we have the packaging for the new Rack Pira. And by the way, I'm also going to do a full review of the Rack Talan Air. I was just waiting for the retail version to arrive, which I now have. I'm also going to give away one Rack Talan Air when we reach 50,000 subscribers. So make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Now, going back, the Rack Pira will be available in a variety of switches, including Rack Gear's own Rack Kalau, which is tactile, and Rack Katala, which is linear. It will also be available in pink, black, and like what we have here, white variant. At the back of the box, we have the key specifications, which you can pause and take a screenshot of if you want. Inside the box, we have the user manual, which you can also take a screenshot so that you can have an idea about its features at a glance. Next, we have the Rack Kalau switches, a small accessory box, the Rack Pira itself, a switch and keycap puller combo, and the PBT double shot keycaps. Inside the accessory box, we just have the USB Type-C charging cable. At first look and touch, the Rack Pira is pretty hefty for its size and construction, which is made out of hard plastic chassis with a powder-coated steel plate. And this is why it weighs roughly around 584 grams and doesn't flex that much. Now, looking at the front side, you'll get an idea that it has a very interesting shape with chamfered edges. You can also see that looking at its side. Now, it features a clean high-profile case, which means the switches will not be visible. The only thing that I don't like about its design is the USB Type-C port that is rather placed dead center. However, I appreciate that it has an ample amount of rubber feet, and most importantly, it has two levels of flip-out stands with a rubber tip as well. Now, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about the placement of the switch, Having this at the bottom makes the side of the keyboard clean at the expense of easy access. Now, this keyboard features an exploded 65 layout with dedicated arrow keys, some of the nav cluster keys, and the alphanumeric keys. We also have a volume knob here that also doubles as a mute button. Now, tearing this keyboard apart is pretty straightforward, but not as easy as I initially thought. The first step is to remove all the screws on the plate, which is a piece of cake. Now, the top cover is secured with clip locks around the edges, and as per my experience, it is quite hard to unclip using just my fingers. I had to use a small flat head to pry it open. Now, let me be very clear about this if you're going to use the same method. Make sure you pry it ever so gently so that you won't break the clip locks or scratch the plate. It can get done easily and safely with a little bit of patience. Now, the volume knob is also pretty hard to remove without a proper grip. So what I did is I just pulled the top cover gently until it popped out. Now, before you can remove the powder-coated steel plate, you need to remove one more screw right beside the encoder. Alright, from here on, we will see everything this budget keyboard has to offer that is otherwise not available on most budget keyboards around this price range. First, the stabilizers are already pre-lubed with a good amount of lubricant. The stabilizer stem is also flat underneath, which means there's no need for further modifications unless you want to do the popular holy mod or micropore mod, which can be considered an advanced method and not quite familiar to most beginners. Interestingly enough, we also have a silicon dampener here on the spacebar. And not only that, but we also have a silicon dampener here sandwiched between the PCB and the steel plate that should reduce most of the reverb, hollow, and peeing sounds if there's any. This is something I haven't seen before on any pre-built keyboard, especially at this budget price point. And it actually keeps getting interesting as we even have some stabilizer dampeners on the PCB which should reduce the harsh sound coming from the plastic to PCB contact and should also soften the bottoming out feel. Again, this is unheard of for a budget pre-built keyboard. And last but not the least, we even have a foam dampener here at the bottom case, which should also help minimize reverb and hollow sounds. Now, I know most of you are eager to know if the Rack Pira uses the same infamous PCB that the Tom 680 has. And honestly, I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to PCBs, 
but judging by what I can see here, it is entirely different. Tom680 uses CIY hot swap sockets, while Dirac Pira uses scale universal hot swap sockets and has a very different layout including the placement of the microchips and the USB Type-C port. This PCB also supports both 3 and 5 pin switches, making it universal and compatible with most Cherry MX style switches. Underneath the foam, we have the 2000 mAh of battery. Now, putting back Dirac Pira is pretty straightforward, but let me give you some reminders. First, make sure that the Bluetooth switch perfectly lines up and test its functionality before moving forward. And second, don't forget to put the LED diffuser back before attaching the top cover. Forgetting any of these two will be a pain in the butt after. Now, all that is left is to install the switches and the keycaps. In terms of the switch options, the Rock Pira will be available with Rock Katala, Rock Kalaw, Killbox White and Speed Bronze, Gatron Yellow, Red, and Black. Now, what I have here is the Rock Kalaw, which is Rock Gear's own tactile switch. It features POM material for the stem, polycarbonate for the top shell, nylon PA66 for the bottom shell, with a 63.5 gram spring, copper leaf, and is unlubricated, giving users the freedom to lube it with their preferred lube and method. And in terms of the overall sound and feel, it is on the clacky side of things, with subtle tactile feedback, and is relatively lightweight compared to most tactile switches out in the market. It is also fairly smooth at its stock configuration, thanks to its palm stem and nylon bottom shell. However, in terms of my personal preference, having been spoiled with the strong tactile feel of the likes of the Gazoo by U40, Glorious Panda, Koala, and the like, I'm not totally contented with the overall tactile bump of the Rack Kalau. Now, in terms of the keycaps, I appreciate the fact that Rack Gears decided to use PBT double shot here, even if the thickness is just around 1mm. At least the legends will never fade away, and the keycaps will not shine that easily over time. Alright guys, before I give you the rest of my thoughts about this keyboard, here's a quick sound test so that you can have an idea of how the Rack Kalaw sounds in combination with all the pre-modifications Rack Gears has done with the Rack Pira. As you've heard, the Rack Pira sounds pretty good. Granted, the stabilizers are not perfect, but definitely better compared to most pre-built keyboards at this price point. Now, aside from all the awesome features of the Rack Pira design and construction-wise, this keyboard also features dual mode with Bluetooth 5.0 and wired. You can connect this up to three devices, and it's compatible with both Windows and Mac OS. Aside from that, it also features NKRO, which means you can press multiple keys at the same time without conflicts, and has a polling rate of up to 1000 Hz. It also has a 2000 mAh of battery and is supported by the Rack Fine Tuner software. Speaking of the software, as with most Rack Fine Tuners, it is pretty simple. We have up to 3 profiles, the Customize tab wherein you can change a keys functions to other functions such as other keys, mouse functions, macro, combo key, and you can also launch a program, use a key as a multimedia shortcut, as a Windows hotkey or disable the key entirely. We also have the lighting tab here where you can adjust the settings like lighting modes, color, direction, speed, and brightness. Next, we have the gaming mode which allows you to disable some keys for an interrupted gaming experience. And lastly, we have the macro tab wherein you can record your own macro if you're into that. Now, I'm not gonna waste your time with the lighting modes so let me just breeze through them here.
In terms of performance, for the entire duration of my testing, I didn't encounter any issues. The wireless performance is pretty good, albeit I'd still recommend wired mode for gaming for the least amount of input lag. NKRO works perfectly fine, I can press as many keys as I want without conflict. Battery life is yet to be determined, and that of course would vary depending on your usage and lighting configuration. Same with longevity, I'll just probably post an update if necessary. Overall, at this price point of just around 2,895 Philippine pesos, honestly in my opinion, this is hard to beat and probably one of the best pre-built mechanical keyboards in the sub-3000 range. Above that, of course, we have better options, but if your budget is limited to this range and with everything it has to offer, from the pre-modifications they've done with the internals down to the universal hot swap socket, wireless connectivity, and overall performance, Rack Gears has done it again. I just hope it will last like my Rack Lamang Pro and that is yet to be determined. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Rack Gears for sending this in. You can get this using the link below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day brawlies, you're always awesome.